Hi, I'm Sophia, and this is part three of modernizing traditional apps for Java developers. In the previous video, I moved a monolithic Java application from a traditional infrastructure of deploying an application server or the application database into a container infrastructure where the application server and web app are deployed together as one unit, and the database is also deployed in a container. By using a Docker file, I automated the build and deploy process for the application. One of the benefits of modernizing traditional apps is that it frees up resources to research and innovate. Automating the build and deploy process lets us move existing application infrastructure to a modern cloud-based service infrastructure. Part of the process of modernization is breaking apart the application into smaller components that are easier to maintain and test. I'll go through the following steps to migrate the application to a microservices architecture. First, I'll leave the existing code in place and operation so I can roll back if needed. Next, I'll create a repository for the new code and design the new code as a separate application. I'm going to deploy the new microservices as a separate service, service using Docker, and I'll test the code. I'll update the existing app to use the new microservices and verify that everything works as expected by deploying to test and that a rollback is not needed. Then finally, I'll remove all unused code from the legacy application to clean up. In part three, I'll fix a common problem with monolithic applications, the performance bottleneck created by writing to the database from multiple clients. We'll get around the bottleneck by adding a RESTful microservice that writes the user data to a Redis database and stores the information in a queue. If you're not familiar with Redis, it's an in-memory key value store that's great for saving abstract data types such as JSON lists. Note that I could use any other key value store in place of Redis, such as memcached or MongoDB. To save the user data to the primary MySQL database, I'll add a worker service that reads the data from Redis and performs the writes to the database. This isolates the database from a direct connection writing from multiple clients and removes the performance bottleneck in the client. I'll be adding three new components to the application, a Redis instance, the Redis registration microservice, and a worker that writes to the database. Adding all these new elements adds complexity to deployment and maintenance when compared to a monolithic application comprised of only an application server and database. However, I'll use Docker to easily deploy, manage, and maintain all these additional services. The application was originally written in Spring, but I'll write the registration microservice in Spring Boot. And the reason I chose Spring Boot because it has many advantages, such as handling the database connections transparently, and it simplifies implementing both an MVC architecture and RESTful interfaces, and also includes a built-in application server in the form of Tomcat. Another factor in choosing Spring Boot is that it has good support for Redis. I could have chosen to use Spring as in the original application, but all of these advantages simplifies configuration and deployment. So when developing microservices, I want to write compact and easy to maintain code. The next piece for migrating the application to a microservices architecture is a worker microservice that retrieves the user data stored in Redis and writes the data to the application's MySQL database. The worker is a plain old Java object or POJO that pulls the data from Redis using the blpop method. This method allows the worker to pop the data from the queue without constantly checking the status of the queue. BLPOP works like a one-time trigger that fires when data gets, mis gets placed in the queue. Setting up the communication between the application and the worker establishes a reliable and fast queuing system. I'll need to change the application code to send the user information to the registration microservice. Instead of connecting to MySQL and inserting the user data, I'll send the data to the registration service instead of calling the code to write it to MySQL. To run the new configuration, I'll create a new Docker Compose file that creates images as needed and deploys the requisite containers for Tomcat, Java, MySQL, and Redis. It also provisions storage for the database and takes care of the networking between the components. In this section, I added additional services to remove a performance bottleneck by replacing a part of the application with microservices. This is a simple way to modernize the application architecture while keeping the original code intact in case a rollback is needed. From using containers with provisioned databases to providing ready-made infrastructure for app servers and POJOs, Docker enables developers to break apart a monolithic traditional Java application into component microservices.
and there's an added benefit in moving towards microservices. It supports adding logging and analytics without touching the application code. Docker makes taking the first step to transition to microservices easier. In part four of this series, I'll add logging and self-surface analytics without touching the application code by using Docker. And if you want to get started modernizing your own app, head to Play With Docker, a training site which is an online environment with Docker configured that has a lot of great tutorials. If you want us to help you modernize your application suite, head to docker.com slash MTA to learn how we partner a Docker architect with an infrastructure provider such as Microsoft or Accenture to bring your apps into the modern world.